This tragedy reminds us of the stakes of this moment. We have to provide the funding so Ukraine can keep defending itself against Putin's vicious onslaughts and war crimes. You know, there was a bipartisan Senate vote that passed overwhelmingly in the United States Senate to fund Ukraine. Now, as I've said before, and I mean this in a literal sense, history is watching. History is watching the House of Representatives. The failure to support Ukraine at this critical moment will never be forgotten. The death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny and the reminder of the vicious nature of the Putin regime comes in this crucial moment where the Ukrainian army resisting Russian aggression is basically running out of bullets and sending dire warnings. A bipartisan package that includes aid for Ukraine has passed the Senate. The House is basically refusing to take it up under orders of Putin's number one American enabler, the head of the Republican Party, Donald Trump. Now, some Republicans have posted little tweets and statements, Speaker Mike Johnson even saying, we must be clear that Putin will be met with united opposition. But they are not discussing the obvious elephant in the room, which is that the reason Mike Johnson is not taking up the foreign aid package is because Donald Trump doesn't want Ukraine aid to pass. He wants Putin to emerge victorious because he needs Putin's support. Joining me now is Congressman Mike Quigley, Democrat of Illinois. He represents one of the oldest and largest Ukrainian-American communities in the U.S. He's been an outspoken proponent of supporting Ukraine. He's also co-chair of the Congressional Ukraine Caucus. Congressman, it's great to have you on. Um, first, just start with, with what you think the, the import of the death of Navalny in Russian custody is for the conversation debate about aid here in the U.S.? Sure. I think it's important that he not die in vain. Uh, he's a hero for our lifetime. Uh, the reason we're fighting in Ukraine is the reason we fought the Second World War, is the fight against tyrants taking over a sovereign democratic country. So uh, I think the best way we can honor him is get the hell back to Washington, D.C. and pass this, this aid package. Uh, it's, it's extraordinarily frustrating, largely because you talk about voices from the past. Let's remember the Reagan doctrine, right? Uh, he spoke eloquently of defending any ally against Soviet aggression, and there'd be no limit to that. Well, this is the quintessential opportunity to step up and do just that. And remember uh, that, uh, I guess I will also remember that uh, we still have other friends there, uh, Evan, Paul, Mark, and others, as well as what, you know, roughly 100,000 Ukrainian children stolen by Putin. If this isn't the time we step up, we've got to ask ourselves who we are as a country. Now, there is a Senate bill that's passed. Uh, the House has just been, uh, is on recess for the next two weeks, if I understand that correctly, through February 28th, I believe. Um, this is the Wall Street Journal today talking about how Mike Johnson's basically lost control of the House of Representatives. I can't think of a better way to say it. And how he would get this to the floor. Johnson's challenge uses uniting his conference now loom over efforts to shore up Ukraine, just as Congress also faces deadlines next month to pass legislation funding the federal government avoid a partial shutdown. House Democrats are weighing unusual parliamentary maneuvers that would require the help of at least a few Republicans to execute. They include a discharge position, a move designed to circumvent the House Speaker and force a vote on Ukraine. I read today that the people were talking about a discharge position at the Munich Security Conference halfway across the world. What, what are the conversations amongst Democrats and maybe with other Republicans happening right now about this? Look, uh, there's probably about a half the Republicans in their caucus who support uh, funding Ukraine. And the, I know, how do you do that? How do you get a bill to the floor? First, uh, real simple. The speaker lets the bill get to the floor. I think democracy dictates that. When the Senate passes something in this day and age with 70 votes, I mean, McCann put the bill on the floor. There are other options. Uh, as you might know, the, the paperwork was done today to do a discharge petition uh, using that Senate bill. It's probably the only bill that can get to the president's desk. It is not perfect. Uh, another bill that was attempted that also dealt with border security uh, was squelched by, I guess, the Republican on high candidate Trump. So uh, this is our best opportunity. I asked my Republican colleagues, I asked the Speaker of the House to have that sense of history and recognize that sometimes doing the right thing is more important uh, than keeping your gavel. Uh, at some point, who's going to remember who the Speaker of the House was? Um, 
when we did something so horrible and he's the one that held it back. That's a sense of history he should have as well. Let me ask you, you, you you've been very outspoken uh, on, on this issue uh, and, and you represent a, a ton of folks who are Ukrainian American from the Ukrainian diaspora and people have relatives and family there. Um, are there, you said half the Republican caucus, and my sense is there's probably 300 votes in the House right now, something sure. like that, for, for this aid package, maybe 280, somewhere there. Um, are there people on the Republican side in leadership who share your conviction? And do they have any say in this? I mean, is, is, is it just Johnson taking orders from the sort of far right of the caucus and Trump? Or are there people who view this the same way you do? Oh, look, I, I traveled to Germany with uh, Republicans who care. We were visiting Ukrainian troops, learning how to use our tanks. I traveled to Ukraine with French Hill, who is very dedicated to this cause. Uh, my message to all my Republican friends is, look, if the far right can hijack your party with 10 to 20 people, you can take it back. You, you can make a stand. If, if 10 or 20 can threaten the speaker and, and to do the wrong thing, you know, nearly half of the caucus can threaten the speaker to do the right thing. Uh, there's not going to be a more important bill that deals with democracy in our lifetime. You know, I said this is the reason we fought the Second World War. It's why we formed the United Nations. It's why we formed NATO. It is the essence of our own security. If we don't remember voices from the past, let's remember those from the future. Let's think about those from right now, that is. General Milley and Secretary Austin, who said, if you don't stand up to the aggression of Putin, you're going to have to double our defense budget, and you're certainly inviting more bloodshed. All right, Congressman Mike Quigley again. Uh, Congressman from Illinois, Chicago, uh, neighborhoods I lived in and loved. It's uh, great to have you on, Congressman. Thank you very much. Thank you.